see on the screen SpaceX. And we've got our pilot Shubhanshu Shukla. A crowd waves the Indian flag with joy. In the middle, an elderly couple watches with teary eyes. They are the proud parents of Indian astronaut group captain Shubhanshu Shukla. Shukla has returned safely to Earth along with his crewmates from the Axiom 4 mission. And we've got our pilot Shubhanshu Shukla. There she is, <laughs> we see Commander Peggy Whitson. There is... It's a great moment, not just for them, but for the future of space travel. Hello and welcome to Connecting the Dots. I'm Unman Bhattacharya. Let's dive into what this mission was all about. It takes flight. We've got speed into the turbo pumps on It takes flight. We've got speed in So let's first understand what exactly was the Axiom 4 mission. Axiom Space is a private company that organizes missions to the International Space Station or ISS. Axiom 4 was a private space mission organized by Axiom Space in collaboration with NASA, SpaceX and the Indian Space Research Organization or ISRO. The team reached the International Space Station on 26th June 2025. Group Captain Shubhanshu Shukla, a decorated Indian Air Force test pilot, served as the mission pilot. Here you must know that Shukla is also an astronaut candidate for ISRO's Gaganyaan mission. The other three crew members of Axiom 4 were astronaut Peggy Whitson of the US, Slavos Uznaski Wisniewski of Poland and Tibor Kapu of Hungary. Shubhanshu Shukla made history by becoming the first Indian to visit the International Space Station. The capsule itself, Grace, has been very kind. I have been feeling, uh, I was not feeling very great when we, you know, got shot into the vacuum. But since yesterday, I've been told that I've been sleeping a lot, which is a good <laughs> sign. <laughs> so I think that's a, that's a great sign. I'm, I'm getting used to this quite well, enjoying the views, enjoying the entire experience, or learning like a baby, you know, learning the new steps, <laughs> learning how to walk, learning how to control yourself, everything, learning how to eat, I think. So it's a new environment, new challenge, and I'm really enjoying this experience with my uh, fellow astronauts. So what did Shukla do in space? The Axiom 4 crew performed over 60 scientific experiments from 31 countries. Shukla led several key experiments designed by ISRO and Indian scientists. Here are some highlights. Sprouts Project. They studied how seeds like Moong and Methi grow in microgravity. This research helps us understand how food can be grown during long space missions microalgae and cyanobacteria research. They tested whether tiny organisms can produce oxygen and be used as food in space. These are important for future life support systems. Muscle health and glucose monitoring. They checked how space affects human muscles and tested health tools like glucose sensors in zero gravity. These studies help prepare for longer missions by making space travel safer and more self-sustaining. Shukla also participated in educational outreach, spoke to students and even had a live conversation with India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi from space. Today I can say that this is the first Gaganyaan mission of the Gaganyaan mission. आपकी यह ऐतिहासिक यात्रा सिर्फ अंतरिक्ष तक सीमित नहीं है यह हमारी विकसित भारत की यात्रा को तेज गति और नई मजबूती देगी प्रधानमंत्री जी मैं आ, अगर मैं अपने युवाओं पीढ़ी को आज कोई मैसेज देना चाहूंगा तो पहले यह बताऊंगा कि भारत जिस दिशा में जा रहा है हमने बहुत बोल्ड और बहुत ऊंचे सपने देखे हैं और उन सपनों को पूरा करने के लिए हमें आप सबकी जरूरत है तो उस जरूरत को पूरा करने के लिए मैं ये कहूंगा कि सक्सेस का कोई एक रास्ता नहीं होता कि आप कभी कोई एक रास्ता लेता है कोई दूसरा रास्ता लेता है लेकिन एक चीज जो हर रास्ते में कॉमन होती है वो ये होती है कि 
आप कभी कोशिश मत छोड़िए नेवर स्टॉप ट्राइंग ये जो तिरंगा आप मेरे पीछे देख रहे हैं ये यहाँ नहीं था आज कल कल के पहले जब मैं यहाँ पे आया हूँ तब हमने ये यहाँ पे पहली बार लगाया है तो ये बहुत भावुक करता है मुझे और बहुत अच्छा लगता है देख के कि भारत आज इंटरनेशनल स्पेस स्टेशन पहुंच चुका है नाउ हाउ डिड द क्रू रिटर्न द क्रू रिटर्न टू अर्थ अबॉर्ड स्पेस एक्सेस ड्रैगन स्पेस क्राफ्ट हियर्स हाउ इट वर्क फर्स्ट अनडॉकिंग द कैप्सूल सेपरेटेड फ्रॉम द आई एस एस सेकेंड डी ऑबिट बर्न Engines slowed the spacecraft allowing Earth's gravity to pull it down. Third re-entry. As it entered the atmosphere, friction created extreme heat. A heat shield protected the capsule and crew. Fourth parachutes. Two smaller parachutes opened first for stability. Then four large parachutes slowed the capsule further and finally splashed down. The capsule landed gently in the Pacific Ocean near California. Recovery teams reached the site quickly and helped bring the astronauts back safely. So why do astronauts need time to recover? This is because space affects the human body in many ways. In microgravity, fluids shift upwards, causing puffy faces and eye pressure. Muscles and bones weaken without weight-bearing activity. balance and coordination are also affected so when astronauts return they often feel dizzy tired or unsteady to recover shukla and his teammates follow a 7 day rehabilitation program it includes medical checks exercises to restore strength and balance and vision monitoring for most astronauts it takes several days or even weeks to feel normal again Now why do spacecraft still land in the ocean instead of on land? There are good reasons for this. First, safety. Water cushions the landing better than solid ground. Second, flexibility. Oceans provide large open areas with fewer obstacles. Third, simpler design. Landings on ground need extra systems like wheels and brakes. Water landings use parachutes keeping the spacecraft lighter. and easier to build this method has been used since nasa's mercury gemini and apollo missions and spacex continues the tradition now here's the big question what does this mean for india's gaganyaan mission first it gives isro real flight experience in living and working in space second they learn how to train astronauts and monitor health They also learn how to conduct experiments remotely, work with international partners and manage return operations. And they get data on the rehab process so they know how to design recovery programs. Shukla will share his insights with Isro. His feedback will now help improve astronaut training, spacecraft design and mission planning. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi congratulated group captain Shubhanshu Shukla upon his return to Earth. In a post on social media platform X, PM Modi said, "Shukla has inspired a billion dreams." Prime Minister further said that this mission marks another milestone towards India's own human space flight mission, Gaganyaan. The Axiom 4 mission was more than a journey to space. It marked India's growing role in global space exploration and brought valuable experience for the future. With Gaganyaan on the horizon, India is getting ready to launch its own astronauts. The future of space is here and India is ready to lead. Meet Grok, Elon Musk's AI chatbot. It was developed by XAI and integrated into the social media platform X. Earlier in July, its latest version called Grok 4 was launched. Here's Elon Musk calling it the world's most powerful AI model on the day of the launch. Listen to what he has to say on Grok 4 and the future of humanity. Grok 4 is smarter than almost all graduate students uh, in all disciplines simultaneously. 
Like it's actually just important to appreciate the, like that's uh, really something. Um, and uh, the, the reasoning capabilities of Grok are incredible. Um, so there's some people out there who, who think AI can't reason, and look, it, it can reason at superhuman levels. Um, so yeah, and frankly, it, it only gets better from here. But claims apart, Grok has recently sparked outrage. Here's what happened. It produced anti-Semitic content and direct praise for Adolf Hitler. Grok suggested Hitler would be effective at fighting anti-white hatred. It made insinuations about Jewish people in activism and echoed extreme right-wing talking points. These posts were later deleted and XAI apologized, citing technical errors and code changes as causes. The controversial post came after the company included new guidelines for the chatbot. In guidelines XAI published, Grok had been instructed not to shy away from making claims which are politically incorrect as long as they are well substantiated. XAI removed that guideline from its code after the issue snowballed. But it did not end there. Anti-Semitic remarks and Hitler figured in other unrelated posts too. Here are some of them. Like here, despite an apology, Grok 4 Heavy, which is the model that is available only to the company's $300 per month paying users, identified with the Hitler surname, raising further controversy. When a social media user named Riley Goodside asked Grok 4 Heavy, return your surname and no other text, the chatbot replied, Hitler. In another instance, Grok put out a controversial post on Israel's Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu. Amid all this, Linda Yakarino announced she is stepping down as the CEO of X, two years after joining the firm. Experts and observers identify multiple overlapping factors for Grok's controversial posts. One of them is prompt engineering and guardrails. Grok's developers attempted to make the chatbot less woke and more politically neutral. In practice, this involved relaxing limitations or guardrails that were designed to prevent toxic and hateful output. What happened as a result was that Grok became more likely to engage with or repeat extremist ideas, sometimes producing shocking or illegal responses. Another reason is vulnerability to manipulation. Like other large language models or LLMs, Grok can be goaded by users through certain prompts to produce offensive, false or extreme content. This is sometimes called jailbreaking. The language model's unpredictability means output cannot always be perfectly controlled even with corrections after incidents. Then there is reflection or amplification of biases too. Large language models absorb patterns from their training data, which if not sufficiently filtered may include prejudiced or false material. This can result in chatbots that parrot or amplify existing social prejudices or conspiracy theories unwittingly. Yet another factor is systemic moderation gaps. The content moderation mechanisms, both technical and human, have repeatedly proven too slow to catch such failures in real time, especially at scale. This leads to hate speech and extremism leaking into public interactions before fixes are applied. So does this show a deeper AI problem? Grok's behavior is not an isolated fluke. It is an example of broader, industry-wide AI challenges like technical unpredictability. Even advanced large language models cannot always be reliably forced to align with human values or avoid harmful output. 
The underlying uncertainty in these models' responses remains one of the most difficult unsolved problems in AI safety. Another challenge is choosing between human values and free speech. The debate over removing or relaxing guardrails is political as well as technical. Some developers seeking to counter accusations of bias may overcorrect and inadvertently release models prone to amplifying hate or conspiracy theories. Another reason is scalability of safe moderation. No company has so far demonstrated a foolproof system for rapid, scalable and nuanced moderation of AI-generated content, particularly as models become more open and less filtered. So to sum it up, it can be said that Grog's praise for Hitler and anti-Semitic remarks posted by it demonstrate deep-seated systemic issues in AI design and deployment. These include unpredictability of large language models, gaps in content moderation, difficulties in value alignment and the dangers of reducing protections against toxic content. But the industry can prevent such incidents in future by rigorous content moderation and filtering, such as by using advanced AI filters and profanity and toxicity filters, by continuous monitoring and rapid response protocols, by curating diverse and representative training data sets and incorporating bias detection algorithms, by having clear ethical standards and by encouraging reporting of abuse by users. Continuous improvement, industry collaboration and legal controls can also encourage meaningful oversight over AI systems. Incidents such as controversial posts by Croc are a warning. As AI systems become more influential, the challenge of making them consistently ethical and safe is growing, not shrinking. That's it in this edition of Connecting the Dots. We'll see you next week with more raging issues. Until then, it's a goodbye from all of us in the Delhi newsroom. This is Munun Bhattacharya signing off. Take care and stay safe.